Hello there. Welcome to another episode of Find Your Voice. My name is Joe Cramman and I'm the host of the show. And we're very lucky to have a special guest on today called Andy Christen. Uh, he's a virtual finance director and a best-selling author of the book, The Profit Mindset. Uh, welcome, Andy. Hi. Nice to, nice to be on. Wonderful. So um, if you want to introduce a little bit more about what you do and what uh, what you offer, that would be perfect. Yeah. So um, I'm, a, as you say, a part-time finance director, virtual finance director, or if you're in America, a fractional CFO. Um, yeah, so basically I, I used to be a finance director in a, in a big business um, and that was a bit boring. So I, uh, I, saw, I saw some people that were putting together portfolio careers and, and helping entrepreneurs, basically people with sort of te- businesses with 10 to, to 100 people. Um, who are getting stuck with the finance side because it's um, it's not something that any entrepreneur goes into business to do. Believe me. No, no, it's um, a bit of a minefield, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's the bit that they avoid and they get the bookkeeper mm. to do it, and uh, yeah, it gets it can get in a bit of a mess. But yeah, it, it's it's an area that uh, if you're going to grow, um, you need to get on top of. And so, working a, a day a month with some of these guys um, can help them along. No, that sounds wonderful. So your book then, what's what's that? Uh, what's the strategy behind that? How does that help? So the book is a, an introduction really into the sort of methodology that I've accidentally fallen across over the years working with I think, about 30 different businesses. Um, so basically it's a four-step process so I- initially, really trying to get to know that your numbers, um, lots of people think they do, but, but there are a lot of numbers out there that people aren't managing. Uh, People sometimes focus in the wrong areas or too much in one area. Understanding what makes a profit, because as businesses get bigger, they get a little bit flabby and less focused. And uh, quite often there's areas that make make losses. Putting together a plan. And then the last stage is to to actually execute the plan, which is where it often falls down. Um, And and I sort of suggest that people get a mentor, really, get someone Mm -hmm. that they're accountable to. Because um, in a small business, often well, they say it's lonely at the top, don't they, in these businesses? And, and that's very true. There's no one to talk to, no one to bounce ideas off. Mm. A lot of responsibility as well. And um, yeah, a lot of responsibility, running really. I mean, business is, is the thing they focus on more than the financial yeah. sometimes. Yeah. And, and if you do have a cash issue, um, you know, people tend to sort of focus on it, micromanage it, and, and, and not think more than a few days ahead. Because mm. obviously you, your staff's mortgages and everything else are dependent upon it, um, but but that that that's really the sort of time when you need someone in the background to say, okay, that's great, but where's this business going longer term? You know, how when you get out of the hole, how can you make sure you don't get back in it? Mm. Um, that that's the sort of area where I come in. That's that's really interesting. It sounds a very valuable book. That it's uh, creating that sustainability as well financially for companies is. Uh, it's really important. So, um, okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with just a few quick fire questions um, and get the ball rolling on that one. So we'll start off with question one. So if you had a business card, Andy, uh, what would it say? Some uh, cards anymore. Yeah, I think it was say bloke that turns up once a month and sort of has a go at you for uh, for not hitting your numbers. <laughs> um, yeah, um, mentor, critical friend, I think is quite a good uh, it's actually I'm a school governor or I have been in the past and that's what they uh, describe as one of the elements of that role and I think that's what it is you know trying to be a trying to help somebody but at the same time you've got to be a bit harsh sometimes and point out some of the, kind, the, yeah, the areas friend, that are going that's on. an interesting yeah. term yeah okay hmm. so um so why on paper should you have never been successful uh well I mean I would probably never have been here if I'd have been any good at school um, I, w- I was okay earlier on because because a little bit of effort got you quite a long way. Um, sort of with the first sets of exams, uh, uh, I don't know if you did O levels and A levels or GCSEs, but the, the, the earlier bits, I got a bit unstuck and uh, and didn't do very well in my degree. So I didn't get any. I wasn't able to get an interview with all the the, the big firms of accountants, and um, so I had to go into industry, which was brilliant because I'd, I'd, I'd have hated going into into practice myself. Mm. Um, and I actually. So I failed my exams five times and passed on the sixth attempt. So 
I don't tell people that a lot, but I think it, it says a bit more about perseverance than it does about yes. uh, academic brilliance. <laughs> well, this is it. Yeah, and that's it. Also, thing. says a bit about the depth of my father's pockets to uh, to fund <laughs> me. <as> well. <laughs> well, going back to the school days, then. So, if we asked ten of your old schoolmates about you, how would they have described you? Uh, the sensible one, I think. Right. Okay. Yeah. Or well, the one yeah. that came to you for advice. Uh. I don't know if they came to me for any advice, but, <laughs> but they probably just realised that if they were doing something daft, I wasn't going to get involved. No, um, okay. Yeah, it's a great, a great uh, bit story I remember from uh, when we were about twenty. A friend of mine and I, I had a Triumph Spitfire, which which wasn't was well, just about roadworthy, I guess. And we <clears> decided <throat> to drive it down to the south of France and have a three and a half week holiday down there because that's how much holiday he could get off when I was a student. And uh, I can remember my mum saying to me that his mother had phoned up and saying she was so glad that uh, he, Stephen was going with me because uh, I was so sensible, which, of course, worried my mother intensely because she didn't think I was particularly sensible at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you were the one relied upon to keep an eye on things to make sure that nobody uh, got up to two. Yeah, I, I was always good at maths, I think, and uh, so that sort of somehow translates into been able to read maps and, and, and look after money I think and, mm. and some of the things that, uh, that perhaps you don't do very well when you're a bit younger no exactly yeah fair enough so um if you're writing the script about a movie of your life describe the opening scene so how would that uh, uh I don't know perhaps um an, an empty food warehouse um when uh you'd have to open the movie when I was about 28, I suppose, or so. But mm. my, my biggest job, the, the, the one that I remember most and the one that sort of set me up, uh, I was, I was um, sub uh, what would you call it, um, pulled onto a team to work part-time on a, on a government contract tender that no one in the business ever thought we were going to win. Uh, so I think they put uh, a few people on there that they didn't have anything else to do, you know. And... Um, we won it. We won this. It's like a hundred million pound a year tender, and uh, we had to set up three food warehouses to feed the whole of the British Army uh, across the world. Wow. And um, I remember walking into the one that we were looking at, just this great big empty shell, ninety thousand square foot. It needed to be fitted out with freezers and um, chillers and all sorts. And uh, mm. thinking, this is a this is a daunting task and luckily i wasn't the operations guy that had to do it but um, no, i was going to say so that would be a good place to start scene yeah. is the, the warehouses and then it will just go on yeah so, yeah, yeah. now interesting okay so what was the last um thing you did that scared you what was the last last time you did something that, that oh, i'm an accountant we don't do much that's risky do we <laughs> um i i went and played walking football last week for the first i haven't played football for five years and uh, that's probably the scariest thing I've done this year, I should think. No, <clears throat> wasn't enough. too wasn't too scary. I was I couldn't walk the next day. Uh, well, my legs were killing me. But uh, yeah. fair enough. So when it comes to technology, then what's making you nervous at the moment? Technology um, mm. within oh, your really industry, up. because I suppose that maybe the automation side is that something AI and things like that being talked about. Is that something that worries you with? With accounting and with bookkeeping, and uh, do you think that'll take not really? No, not really. I mean, there's an advert that goes around that says that um, I think it says zero advert actually. Zero is a very good product, but it says something like um, you know you don't need an accountant now to to, to do your accounts. You can just use zero. Um, I always think that's a bit like you know you you don't you don't need a brain surgeon now to do brain surgery because you can buy a scalpel. Um, yeah. You know. It, it's yeah. a great tool, but you need someone that, need, that, that needs to understand how to work it. Mm. I mean, the chat, chat GPT, I've been looking at, it's really, it's, I'm quite interested in it. Um, I've used it to sort of, to, as, as more of a sort of a research and prompting thing, you know, to prompt, uh, what, you know, what, what sort of marketing blurb could you write about something? And it's quite yeah. good for that, but it's a long way off uh, but then you'll now have a job, I think, at the moment in uh, mm. in any serious role. I'm sure. I'm sure it'll all get there. Um, yeah, but again, you have it, to engineer it. You have to have people who understand what you, to input yeah, to get the yeah. output. You know, it's um, yeah. I, it's, I, it's, it's, it's a human I think in in accounting at the at the lower end of of the sort of the, the food chain, if you like, you know, sort of 
doing journals and the repetitive work, um, technology has been making that a, a lot easier. Um, maybe taking some jobs away, or maybe just allowing people to to do their jobs better and and, and do the more interesting part, uh, and, and rely on the machines to do the the, the more repetitive things. But mm. I think it's it's probably a long way off. Um, you, you know, putting someone like me out of work. Um, that's, 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 so. my, that's my hope anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But okay, I think you yeah. can. You know, it's it's there for you to to <clears throat> to use and to harness and 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 to and to move forward, isn't it? Well, this is it. So for the next question is related to that, really. So for a $10,000 bet, then what can you confidently do better than chat BT, TTP? Uh, well, I, I could probably find anything on the internet after 2021 because because yeah. the database that they're using finishes <clears throat> then. That's correct, <laughs> so yes. I could, I could tell you that, that Liverpool beat Man United 6-0 last week. I don't think chat GPT is caught up with that. <laughs> no, that's, that's a good point, actually. That's a good point. Okay, so when was the last time you had to leave something behind, and uh, what was it, and why? Leave something behind. Um, I left a role behind, actually. Um, so about five years ago, or a bit longer, um, I was involved in a business. We we set it up, a uh, serial entrepreneur uh, set a few businesses up, and I was involved in them. Had a small stake. Um, really interesting. Grew them. One of them went was quite large um, we sold them both and but we both stayed on working as consultants and then he left and I just thought actually it's, it's too big a job it needs to be a, it needs a full-timer um, so I I sort of handed my notice in and said I needed to I needed to move on so that, that was a yeah a bit sad to leave that that role because it's it, oh, yeah. you know a bit of a baby that we'd set up and, yeah, and, and, yeah. and it had been really successful um, but it, it, I was the wrong person to be to be doing that at that time. And, it needed and were you confident the people that took it over were able to sort of manage and handle things in the right way? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a slow process of handing it over. I mean, mm. David left a year before I did and um, put a new MD in. Uh, I got um, recruited a guy who was the FC and then he, he, he was promoted to FD. So, yeah, it was a it was a managed process. Ah, fair enough. So if you have 60 seconds, teach me in the audience something that will change our lives. Um, so there's a, there's a quote from a book, I can't remember what the book's called now, and uh, the guy had a, the guy was running a business, set it up very quickly, they were all quite young, and they got um, a, a non-executive director who used to run BT, can't remember his name either now, and his advice was, watch the cash laddie and that is, that is really good advice for anyone who's mm. running a business uh, uh, under, understand where your cash has been and <laughs> come from and also where it's going to go in the next three months yeah so so what would you be your strategy to looking at that is it just literally just p l just looking at the profit and loss and just no it's your it. bank it's, it's your bank account really i mean yeah if, it's no point in looking at your p l if, if you haven't got any cash in the bank it's the first mm. sort of the first pillar really that you need to you need to make sure that you you know where the next next month's payroll is going to going to come from, and and, and yeah. then the, either the month or the quarterly rent or the quarterly VAT payments. They're the, they're the killers normally when uh, when cash is tight. So, are you somebody that people go to when they want investment opportunities as well? Do you know how to point you know as business entrepreneurs into the right direction to get investment for their company? Not really. No, I haven't really got involved in that. I'm, I'm part of a group and there's a guy in there who specializes in that. So in, anything like that, I pass his way. I'm mm. more sort of nuts and bolts, um, regular monthly um, account accounts, you know, not not making, not doing the accounts, but looking at them and analyzing yeah, them and, yeah, and plan, planning forward. Mm. Now that, that, that's uh, really useful. So 20 year old self watching right now, um, what would you advise them? Take a few more risks, I think, really, because I, I I worked in a in a job, well, various jobs, uh, until I was about forty five, uh, and I'd wanted to go out on my own for a few years, but it wasn't quite right. It was two thousand and eight was this was not a good time financially, mm. so I put it off for a while. In fact, it's before that would have been two thousand and two, I suppose. Um, so, so yeah, just I think I, I could have jumped earlier uh, and and and. I think the thing is, I thought I had to wait until I really knew everything. Mm. You know, I was really experienced. Whereas actually, I think you only have to be <clears throat> this much better than 
than the people you're 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 advising really you, you only need to know so much um so what's the biggest difference yeah exactly what's the biggest risk that you regret taking then would you say risk i regret taking so um, something that you think you know what well, i wish i'd just done that thing you know it doesn't even have to be in business it could be something yeah. in your personal life or whatever but uh probably looking back i, I it would have been a good idea to have uh, to moved up uh, properties more frequently than we did and take on some bigger mortgages uh, mm. when when interest rates were low mm. um, you know that was that's one thing perhaps we missed out on but i i've never really been that interested in property so uh, <clears throat> you sound like a man who plays things very carefully which is exactly the sort of person you want in your business <laughs> exactly. looking at your money so, you know, that's you're, exactly you're, it isn't it yeah your personality fits exactly what you do so you yeah. don't want somebody who's going to come in and be like oh yeah i just went out and did this thing that thing and i got this thing planned next year but i'm not sure i'm going to do it you know it's kind of like make you a bit nervous of like do you really want this guy looking at our books or what you know he's just yeah. in the casino every month or something you know it's like no it's let's, let's uh no, that, that, that's the sort of person that I have as a client, and then yeah. I, I, I'm the sort of the other side of that, the uh, the foil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you should you'd be a useful guy to take around Las Vegas, to be perfectly honest with you, because I think I'll be going to town and come back with empty pockets. To be fair, so. <laughs> I've only ever been to one casino, I think, and actually and actually done that thing, and it was it was many many years ago in in Monte Carlo when you they had um, a, a room of slot machines. Mm. I'll tell you how long ago it was. I took in uh, 50 francs, 50 French francs, and you got like a, a tube of, of one franc pieces, mm. and I came out with 70. So I, I, I'm one of a very few people who have actually taken money out of the Monte Carlo Casino. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. That's an interesting I haven't retired thing. on it yet, obviously. But yeah. <laughs> no. Okay, so uh, the final question then. So what three words would you want written on your epitaph? So... Careful would be one of them, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think yeah, what three I, words would you say? Maybe I'll take some wild risks in the years I've got left. Um, I don't know. Um, I think three words that's not many, is it? Good, good father, husband, maybe. I don't know. That's, that's yeah. probably the most important that's thing. Fair enough. That's, yeah. uh, that's sensible and, and uh, considerate. So well, wonderful. Well, it's been great, Andy, chatting to you. And um, where can we find your book? Where have you got a website? <laughs> uh the book's on amazon so yeah um and i think you can find it through my linkedin which you've, you've got my linkedin haven't you i think you're gonna yeah so the profit mindset yeah uh, by andy Kristen. um okay so yeah just for our audience to know uh wonderful well andy it's been great and um just to make our listeners aware if uh, you want to become a thought leader and have a conversation and discuss your story and insights on other podcasts visit us at podcastguesting.pro and um, hopefully we'll be in touch. And uh, Andy, it's been wonderful to, uh, chat. And hopefully, yeah, you can help out a lot of business owners and get their books in order and stuff like that, especially through the economic issues we're having at the moment. And you're a very handy guy to know. So, um, yeah, I appreciate yeah, it's your a time. Bit, bit challenging, isn't it? Well, thanks for having me on. I really enjoyed it. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, wonderful. All right, Andy, well, thanks a lot. And uh, take care, everybody. And uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers. Thanks.